Yo, guys, welcome to FL Teams. My name is Dylan Spaulding. I am the USF contributor for FL Teams, and we are joined by the newest member of FL Teams here, Vaughn Sakura. Vaughn, great to have you on here. Obviously, we got a lot to get into. It's the start of conference play for the South Florida Bulls here, uh, but it's not in Tampa. It's in Boca. We're going to get into that here in just a few moments. we got a lot to cover as we'll look at the Louisville game from Saturday and look at the ECU game. But uh, for the people out there who are just seeing you for the first time, obviously first time here with the program, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, you know, kind of maybe your favorite football team, you know, or whatever. Uh, just, just some things about yourself for the for the viewers out there. Yeah, so my name is uh, Vaughn Sikora. I'm a current uh, junior at USF right now, so – Pretty locked in on the team. Uh, last year, I was playing football at Oberlin, so I'm a former football player. So at FL Teams, I'm going to get into some stuff on the scheme side. Um, I also am a big basketball fan, so I'm going to be writing all over the place for FL Teams. But I'm excited to talk about this USF team. It's been a little tough this year, and with the storm coming through, the game moving to Boca, it's going to be interesting. But super excited to join and uh, be on here with you, Dylan. Yeah, man, this will be fun. A lot to get into. Again, this has been a busy, busy week for a lot of teams, uh, especially the pro teams as well. You got the Bucks and Chiefs game that could very well be moved out of Tampa. I have heard reports possibly it might happen and, and go to Minneapolis. So, again, we'll see there. But obviously, we're covering the Bulls, going to look at college kind of strictly here tonight. So, uh, that's uh, for another time and another day. But I guess let's kind of kick things off here. As I mentioned, we'll kind of go into talking a little bit about some of the schedule changes. And for the most part, not many schedule changes and nothing major, I would say. Again, USF is probably the biggest major change with them moving all the way down to Boca Raton, which really, if you think about it, Miami really wasn't out of the hurricane damage area, if you will. So they kind of got a little bit of the hurricane as well. But uh, you know, Hurricane Ian definitely having some effects on the college football landscape this week, man. But we got two games being played on Sunday, which is very, very uncommon in college football. So that's going to be pretty cool to have, you know, college football going on on Sunday. And then you got USF at FAU Stadium here on Saturday night. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting as we go through. I mean, we're still not 100% sure where the storm's going to end up. Obviously, today, Wednesday the 28th, Miami got some of that flooding. Yeah. So it's harder to um tell exactly where i know the bucks are practicing down there and uh the, the game's playing in boca but we'll kind of have to play it by ear with these games but yep. as a football team it is a super weird thing to not be in your own facility to have to play somewhere else than you were scheduled so we'll see how much that could shake up some of these games yeah for sure and, and if you're florida and ucf you're probably happy that those games are, are getting uh staying put there in their home stadiums obviously florida getting eastern washington and what should be i would hope a cupcake game if you will there's no cupcake game in college football uh obviously we saw that last year when florida's played samford last year uh late in the season and then obviously ucf against smu which should actually be a pretty good matchup two top teams in the american but uh yeah it's yeah gonna be i a agree uh touching on eastern washington though they're they're gonna come in and for uf fans um that don't know they're just as good as an fcs team as Samford was, uh, they're the team. If you've seen them on uh, on TV, you've probably seen them because they have that red field all the way across. So, but they're a very good FCS foe that can throw the ball around the yard a little bit. But UF needs to look to get back on track here. Get Anthony Rich Anthony Richardson some easy touches, some easy throws back into a place where he can be confident in throwing the ball and create space running the ball at the same time. Yeah, definitely for sure. Anthony Richardson is a. Uh... He's kind of been up and down this season. You know, he looked good in that Utah game and Florida really balled out. And then the last couple of weeks have kind of been the opposite of what we've seen from week one. So really kind of an interesting Florida team under Billy Napier here in his first season as head coach. So uh, obviously, you know, again, three changes already here on the schedule. Uh, FSU was kind of the big question mark, if you will, out of the uh, Florida teams that are going to be playing this weekend. I know a lot of other Florida teams like D2 schools and D3 schools are also changing their schedule. So uh, a lot of changes getting made here with Hurricane Ian. But again, the three major ones, Florida and UCF on Sunday and USF obviously will be playing in Boca. And that kind of goes into our opening thoughts about this game, Vaughn. So, you know, the Bulls, uh, you know, coming off a loss. And I guess we'll actually we'll talk about the Louisville game first because we'll kind of transition in the ECU. But, uh, you know, kind of open things off here with this Louisville game, man, 41 to three. Uh, it was very much a repeat of week one where the Bulls just had nothing going for them at all. I mean, they were horrible on all sides of the field. Actually, special teams was pretty good in week one. 
they were not good on week uh, week four for us here this week. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done with this Bulls team. You know, we thought that going into week three after or after going out of week three, I should say, we thought this Bulls team might, you know, have some potential here going into the remainder of the season. And now we don't know what this Bulls team is. We still don't know the identity of this Bulls team yet. And uh, that's kind of alarming here, especially going into conference play. Yeah, I agree there. And I think you could definitely also see this week if you want to be on the USF side and see it as great, had to play a really good team last week in their stadium. This would be a big letdown spot for them. But the thing is, as Jeff Scott is trying to transition this program into something of a powerhouse in a group of five setting, you can't have that week where you're playing a major group or power five team. And then you have a letdown the next week, because although Louisville is probably going to finish somewhere in the middle of the AAC, they're not, something they're not a team that's 38 points better than usf malik cunningham can throw the ball around the yard he can run around but the bulls didn't really show a lot of fight and offensively you know it's a lot of bohannon read option stuff and then Batie got uh, well from what i'm seeing nine carries so it's just not a lot of rhythm throughout the game a lot of three and outs a lot of behind the sticks but what were you seeing from that loss yeah i i similarly see the same thing and you know i it's one of those things where, you, you know, Bohannon has not looked good passing the ball. And that's really been, I they need to fix that urgently because there's only so much that the receivers have done that I could blame the receivers on this season. You know, there, uh, Dolison had a, had a 60 yard uh, pass to him on Saturday's game in the end zone. And he couldn't make up with the play. Like yeah. as a receiver, you got to make those plays. And we've had a lot of those this year where there've been big plays that have been missed by our receivers, but Bohannon, there's a lot of throws that he makes. They're just off the mark. And he just, his ball, I I don't know what it is, but Bohannon just hasn't thrown a lot of good balls this season for the USF Bulls. And obviously he's thrown a lot of picks this season, as well as we've seen the last couple of weeks. And uh, you know, obviously the Bulls, they're a rushing team. We know this going into this game. We know what the, what the stats look like. We know how the team has been performing the last couple of weeks, but you got to rely on your passing at some point because sooner or later, such as we saw from Louisville, we, we didn't see Florida stop the run at all against USF. Louisville just stopped the run completely and the passing game just had no answers for it. So it's one of those things where the bulls need to find something where they need to consistently, you know, find a good mix of passing the ball and running the ball, even though rushing is their strength. I, I do think they need to get the passing game going. And unfortunately I have to say, man, Bohannon is most of the blame of it i mean he has thrown a lot of bad balls this season uh that receivers really haven't had a shot to make yeah it's it's definitely been tough i mean when you look at bohannon and you watch him on tv he's the kind of guy where it's like wow look at this huge transfer a lot of talent really there athletically can make the big splash play but it's just been too inconsistent right we look at this last game he was nine for 17 62 yards and two picks and any college setting that's just not going to get it done and on first down and on second down we can run those read option plays and you can give it to Batty and you can read the end or you can yeah. run QB power, QB draw, whatever you want to do. But when USF gets in these spots where they're in third and eight, third and 10, third and 15, it's just not looking great, whether it be the drops or the balls that's off. There was also a fumble that Bohannon had on like an easy mesh where he was trying to read it. And I understand when you have read option plays, it's tough between the running back and the QB yeah. who's taking it, who's not. But it's the type of thing where, it's it's easy mistakes. And then defensively, I think I think it was either the second or third touchdown that I had. All that Louisville ran was a screen and go. So you fake the bubble screen and then one of their receivers ran a vertical. And it's just it it's stuff from a young team. And I know this team's young, but you want to see some of these little mistakes get ironed out as the season moves on. Yeah, and you mentioned young. Uh I, I think we can transition into the defense here a little bit now. Obviously, offensively, the Bulls again were very very stagnant on uh on saturday to say the least and uh for malik cunningham man i gotta tell you man what a dynamic quarterback and it's always louisville that comes out with these dynamic running quarterbacks man you got bridgewater which was the last time these two teams actually met before saturday and then you got lamar jackson and now you got malik cunningham man the only thing that stopped him on saturday was the freaking field goal net when he scored his second touchdown of the day which I, <laughs> I died laughing when i saw that i thought it was hilarious but uh I tell you what, man, Malik Cunningham, he's a special quarterback, and I feel like a lot of people aren't talking about him very much. I just think Louisville, the last couple of years, they've been out of the spotlight. You know, when Lamar was there, 
They were a top team in the nation. People were talking about him every week because of how a dynamic Lamar is. And now you got a guy in Willie Cunningham who I feel like a lot of people are going to start talking about this kid here soon. Yeah, he, he's been pretty fantastic. And if you want to look at last week, you want to talk about how dynamic a guy is and you want to look at a stat. Yeah. He had nine carries for 113 yards and three touchdowns. That's crazy. So however you want to split that up between USF having an awful uh, rush defense on some of those and him being amazing, you can split it up however you feel. Yeah. But Malik Cunningham has been fantastic a lot of this year. If he can continue to be to get his passing up, similar issues, some of the similar issues to Bohannon with inconsistencies in the passing, he could look towards being maybe a later uh, round draft pick with some of the um, draft things coming later in the year. Yeah, definitely for sure. He's definitely an intriguing prospect to to keep an eye on here as we get later into the season, uh, and especially too with some of these big games coming up. I mean, you look at Louisville's schedule, man. It's not an easy schedule. They got a lot of tough games. They got UCF and they got JMU in the non-conference schedule. So not an easy schedule for Louisville. This was probably the easiest game. And obviously they handle business in, uh, in, in Louisville, Kentucky, right outside of the Churchill Downs. I, I had posted on Instagram. I said, the USF Bulls need to be racehorses here, thoroughbreds, if you will, in this ball game. And unfortunately, that was not the case at all on Saturday. Not and at all, no. Y- you were mentioning, too, by the way, with this uh, young team that we have, I will say one of our sides of the ball, the defensive side of the ball, man, it's 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 not a young group. A lot of veterans. The secondary is a lot of older guys on that roster who have been there even during the Charlie Strong era. And I'll tell you what, man, the defense, they made some plays, but all in all, man, they were pretty ugly as well. They missed a lot of tackles. They they couldn't play for nothing on Saturday. They were they were pretty ugly on Saturday. Yeah, I would say USF uh, haven't been impressed by any of their defensive outings this year. If you look at it, Florida puts up 31, didn't feel great about their defense in that game, couldn't really hang with their rushing attack. And then BYU puts up the 50-burger. Howard even put up 20. So when you're looking at a team where it's like, hey, we really need to beat Howard, you don't really want them to be putting up 20 points. So USF hasn't really showed us anything impressive on defense so far. And it's not like the schedule's getting any easier. East East Carolina and Cincinnati are not going to be offenses that lay down in any way shape or form so hopefully we can see a little bit of a mend and a little bit more uh efficiency on the defensive end especially as you were saying it is a young team overall but especially on the defensive side there is a couple more years and some more leaders that should be stepping up on that side yeah definitely for sure and uh you know like guys like Antonio Greer who's on the on the defensive side of the ball you know some guys who have been with the team for a while and have really contributed. Like last year, I, I was when I was going through the stats from last season and just looking at such. Uh, I know there was like four guys who totaled like ten interceptions last year, which is pretty pretty decent actually for for South Florida last season. It, taken away from what you saw last season, you know it was a rough year last year for the Bulls, a very rough year. And there was a lot of games where they just couldn't finish the job on on some of these teams where they had wins or they had an opportunity, I should say, to win uh, last season. So. You know, it, it, it's definitely a shame that we haven't seen the defense step up like we've seen, it, it, you know, in a few times last season. But again, as you mentioned, this is a very young team. A lot of young guys still coming up through the ranks here with this uh, with this team. So that's basically it, I guess, we'll, for the Louisville game. Again, we'll kind of looking back at the non-conference schedule, man. It was a rough non-conference schedule for us. You know, we had a lot of tough games. BYU is basically going to be a power five school next year. So they're, you know recruiting if you will towards becoming a power five school in the upcoming next season you got florida in the swamp you got louisville and kentucky and then you know howard all those hbcu schools man are always going to play pretty tough you know whenever you got an hbcu school it's it's gonna be a pretty tough matchup so I, i'll be honest man the usf bulls non-conference schedule was uh there was a lot of ups and downs if you will in the non-conference schedule for us it's 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 not what you wanted to see. Obviously, yeah. playing Florida close is a big deal and as much of a moral victory as they had in those first four games. But if Jeff Scott, I mean, at this point in the season, it's not looking. I mean, obviously, you still want to chase the bowl game. You still want to improve and win as get many games as possible. But at this point, with Jeff Scott just signing that contract, we want to see flashes and maybe some more consistent play. Because like I was saying, some of the Louisville plays, it's not like it was anything crazy that the defense was getting beat on. Easy screening goes, and then offensively, little mistake after little mistake after little mistake. And those are the things that are going to take this team from being 2-10, and 3-9, and nine, like some of the uh, bad records of the last couple of years. More consistent football and some flashes from this team is what we need to see the rest of the year, even if it's not 
a lot of wins. I do want to say before we get into this ECU USF game here in just a second, uh, I want to ask you, uh, you know, Saturday we saw Katravis Marsh come into the game for a little bit, uh, made a few plays actually, got a couple of yards uh, passing in the game against Louisville. Um, for USF fans and for you obviously being a former quarterback, um, you know, what do you, what's the men, what's the mental mentality, if you will, for Bohannon going forward? Because, you know, Marsh came into the game in that game. I know it was a blowout, but you got to wonder how much longer does Bohannon have a leash with the Bulls? You know, I mean, that, that has to become a factor here, especially as we get maybe later in the non-conference or in the conference play, excuse me. It's got to become a factor, man. If he's still playing the way he's been playing the last four weeks, that's got to become a, a thing where when does Marsh maybe possibly get a start here in the uh, upcoming se- in the rest of the season going forward? Yeah, so it's obviously tough, especially when your team's coming out with such a poor record as USF started. And Bohannon's the guy who's supposed to be, I wouldn't say the savior of the program, but the guy who's supposed to come in and, hey, maybe we can win some games now yeah. coming from a serious program like Baylor. Um playing some serious opponents and performing pretty well in some games last year. So Bohannon was supposed to be the guy coming in and now four games in not producing very well. And obviously when, uh, as a quarterback going into these games, Catravius Marsh is not the type of guy that I want to be my backup, you know, six, five kid that can do it all um, is from Hialeah. So he's almost, he's a, he's a hometown kid, which is awesome. And something that we've wanted to see this USF program continue to do, which is recruit around these areas unfortunately I don't know if Marsh is the consistent enough passer to where he could be the bull starter throughout but if he can show flashes Bohannon is playing poorly enough to where it is a good possibility that I would and not even a good possibility but something that I would like to see out of Jeff Scott is hey if nothing's happening this year with Bohannon let's look towards the future and start building towards something in the years following and can't can't really make a judgment on Marsh from what I've seen so far but as far from what I've seen from Bo Hannon, it's nothing to where Marsh should be kept out of the game, um, yeah. especially if we struggle again against ECU, which is a team that's solid defensively, but it's nothing crazy that should be another game where we come out and score three points. Yeah, yeah, Bo Hannon, I mean, again, it, I think the big question is, is he going to be one of these, you know, transfers that USF gets that becomes a bust like we saw with Blake Barnett, you know, a few years back, or is he going to... What was the guy from Miami as well? Um, oh, geez. Yeah, I know who you're Williams talking about. Williams from Miami. Yeah, Williams from Miami. Yeah, I remember him. Yep. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, again, you know, as you mentioned, Vaughn, I mean, this kid was supposed to be kind of the guy they were going to try to build around, at least the offensive side of the ball. And so far, he has not looked good, uh, you know, from last season. And last season, he won the Sugar Bowl with Baylor. And he was actually very good last season. Obviously, much you know, much bigger program, a lot more talent going there as well, but in terms of ratings and such. But, I mean, you know, you would hope that you would have seen some more out of Bohannon so far this season. And he's made some good plays, like some veteran plays that I've liked, but a lot of plays has just been miscues and just little mistakes that have really cost the Bulls. So, again, we'll see. And, obviously, that kind of goes into he gets his first chance at, kind of rewriting the wrong and non-conference play. He gets to play ECU. Both teams have a very different style of offensive play. Uh, you know, again, this is a, a good test for USF against a very competitive ECU team that almost beat North Carolina State in opening uh, week of the season. So we'll get right into this, man. Uh, obviously talking about USF and ECU heading into Saturday. First off, I want to ask you, mentally speaking, What's the mentality for this USF team going into Saturday? You know, you come off a very unfortunate loss, and now you have the game being moved down to Boca Raton, you know, a stadium that you barely ever had played in before uh, today, that game on Saturday. So what do you think the mentality is for this team going into, or what should the mentality be going into Saturday? Yeah, for my notes, I, all I had was it's just a gut check from this team. You're one and three. Your back's against the wall. You're in the corner whatever saying that you want to use, right? You're in Boca. You haven't played there before. I'm pretty sure um, when there was a betting line, it was ECU by eight and a half. And now I'm seeing online ESPN, ECU 78% chance to win. So USF's kind of in that nobody believes in a spot and they need to show it. They need to show that they can be a frisky team, that Bohannon can make some plays. And I don't want to continue to rag on Bohannon, but the fact of the matter is USF's one and three. He has six picks and has still not thrown a touchdown. Yeah. So they need to see some offense early. 
They need to be able to come out in some rhythm. I mean, I think when the offense has been at its best, like against UF and against Howard, is when there was some rhythm, when Batiste getting some touches. Because when Bohannon tries to do it all himself, as we've been talking about, it hasn't turned out too well. And as you were saying, this ECU team is pretty tough this year. You look at the 2-2 record, you don't think very much, but they played number 10, NC State. NC State, very close. They only lost by one point. And for those who watched that game, they know how close ECU was throughout that entire game. And with that game being in Boca, I think that puts more pressure on USF, not them not being at home, than ECU traveling a couple more hours south. But how are you feeling about the game Saturday? Uh, it's definitely a tale of two different teams, man. You know, ECU is is a team that might have a shot to win the American this year. You know, the ECU is a very, very good football team this season. And it, it shows by the numbers. Obviously, I'm not I'm not good with the schematic type of things in terms of, you know, obviously, Vaughn, I know you're you're going to be able to cover that more here on the site. And obviously, I can't wait to see some of the articles you're going to be able to get out for with that. But I mean, again, a, as you mentioned with the passing, man, one thing that is so urgently needs to get fixed. And I would love to see a passing touchdown to open the game with, uh, you know, Bohannon is no passing touchdowns by USF this season. We're the only FBS team without that. That is kind of alarming. Sad. Yeah, it's a little bit sad, too. It's sad. It's sad and alarming at the same time. And I think it's one of those things that, you know, Bohannon, if he could get a passing touchdown early in that game, like in the first drive, second drive of the game, I think that could be a big momentum boost heading into the rest of the game. You know, you build some confidence when you're with your receivers. Xavier Weaver is a heck of a receiver for this USF team. And he has not gotten the ball very much this season. In that first week, he got like 100 yards, which is like his – his career high or something, I believe, if I remember correctly from that game. So I think if they could get a passing touchdown, build some momentum with that passing game and then run the ball, you know, try to slow down the defense as well with Batty. I mean, they got four running backs, basically. They got Batty, Mangum, Dukes, and even Bohannon who can run the ball as well. And Bohannon's not afraid to get hurt or, or hit, excuse me. We saw some big hits on Saturday. There was a scary incident where he was kind of slow getting back up. Looked like he had some, you know, kind of issues there. But uh, he was luckily okay, stayed in the game. But I tell you what, man, Bohannon is a tough guy. And he could run the ball easily. And he could be one of the best runners with any of them in the FBS. So, you know, try to get that first drive touchdown. Run the ball a little bit. I think USF could have a shot maybe. But, you know, you got to fix some of those mistakes. The penalties have been a big deal as well. A lot of middle mental mistakes in terms of penalties and a lot of key mistakes late in the game as well as cost the Bulls this season, especially in the Gators game. We saw uh, a fumble that went beyond the head of Bohannon and that lost him the game. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I think USF needs to get a first, first drive passing touchdown in my opinion. Yeah. And as you're saying, he can be one of the best runners in the FBS. He's an absolute tank and an absolute great runner but he definitely needs to start building that rapport with his receivers where they believe they can go out and get something done in the passing game and Jeff Scott like when he was hired I was super excited thinking that he was going to bring that Clemson style type of offense to USF and I do like a lot of the motions and a lot of the things I'm seeing but at the end of the day you look at the amount of points that USF's produced this year and that tells you the story so yeah. we need to see some more points being put on the board some more flashes of hey Jeff Scott I think he can be a really good offensive mind but Let's start seeing a little bit more of these flashy plays, plays down the field, whatever we can do to mix it up a little bit and get these defenses off balance. Definitely for sure. And uh, and, and one thing I was going to mention too is Jeff Scott is a former receivers coach at Clemson. So, you know, he his, his whole thing is with the receivers. So, you know, that that's kind of his background heading into this coaching job with USF. So, you know, it's one of those things where maybe we could see the passing game implemented here. And again, you know, USF is, is, is basically a road game at this point for them, even though they're still in Florida. So we'll, we'll see, it should be interesting to see what's going to happen on Saturday in terms of the passing game and how it's going to be implemented. But yeah, I mean, you look at this team, man, I mean, the defense needs to step up. Really everybody needs to step up this game. I mean, again, this is non-conference play. Jeff Scott said it best in his post-game press conference on Saturday. You know, this is a new slate. They're O and O. They could easily run the table. They could do damage in this conference. I think USF has one of, you know, they have talent on the roster to get bowl eligible still, actually, which is crazy to say, even though they've lost, you know, three out of their last four. But this team has the talent on the roster to be a bowl eligible team. I, I really do believe that. 
but they got to step up and they got to, they got to stop making these mistakes and, you know, really clean some stuff up. And a lot of times, you know, there are certain reasons for that. Vaughn, how do you think they clean up some of these mistakes that have been made in terms of penalties? Uh, it, it, especially if you being a former quarterback, how do you re- rely that to your players? Like, how is there a way to, you know, calm down your, your offensive team and, you know, allow those mistakes not to happen? So, yeah, as I was saying earlier, I think it definitely starts with the QB and the offense having that trust and having that confidence that, that hey, this guy is going to be able to march us down the field. This yep. is the guy who is going to be able to our leader, our field general. If we're down, no big deal. If we're having to drive 80 yards, okay. If it's fourth and 15, whatever. Yeah. So that trust has to be there. And that's going to start with Bohannon performing better. But at the same time, as I was saying, it's a young team, but it comes down from the coaching staff as well. Those little things, making sure, hey, let's not false start. <clears throat> hey, let's make sure that we have everything in order, penalties, formation-wise, organizationally, because sometimes – it looks like there could be a wrong route and Bohannon's throwing it over a guy's head on some of these interceptions. So yep. Bohannon needs to, first of all, take over, start performing better, build the confidence and rapport with his teammates, and then hopefully through him performing better, the coaching and everything will become more balanced and everyone will relax a little bit. Because when you have such an erratic guy as we've had so far at the helm, it's been tough for the team to really settle down and get in a groove. And one thing you got to remember too is, man, is you got a first-year OC and DC this season so you got brand new guys coming in taking over this you know i I said that week one too in in my article when they played byu and everyone was freaking out that we were getting blown out by 30 it was definitely disappointing you know there was so much hype going into it then you had the two hour freaking delay that was so brutal at being a usf you know fan inside of me and then you have the just a blowout of a game that it ended up being but you got to remember these guys have been, you know, learning each other these last couple of weeks. And, you know, they're playing teams that they're not going to be seeing on a yearly basis as well. You know, they're playing teams that they're going to be playing once every couple of years. So, you know, again, they're they're learning. And, and, and Louisville and Florida, are, they're bigger guys. You know, Louisville's a fast team, man. Their defense was just flying all over the place on Saturday. Florida was not doing that on Saturday. That was one of the big things they were talking about it during the game is, you know, Florida is a, a much slower, you know, kind of, you know, heavy, you know, hitting kind of defense. When you got Louisville, they're fast, flying all over the place, you know, tackling you from here, or there. So, you know, they're two different defenses going into sat, you know, going into these past two Saturdays. So, you know, USF has had to face some pretty tough opponents these last couple of weeks, but they've also had to change their game plans a little bit as well. So, Again, it's going to be interesting to see how they kind of prepare and get and see what the game plan is going to be like here for Saturday. And I know we've talked a lot about USF here heading into Saturday, so I thought we transitioned now into ECU a little bit. And they got a, a special quarterback at the helm, Holton Aylers, who is the quarterback. I believe I said his name right. Holton Aylers. Ay- I think you got it. Aylers. Okay, that sounds good to me. So, <laughs> uh, really good season he's had. Uh, over a little over a thousand yards in in, in passing. Uh, 151.0 quarterback rating, which is very impressive. And uh, he, he's done a very good job with this ECU squad, man. And, you know, ECU showed a lot of signs last year of possibly, you know, being a, a pretty good team in the AAC. And right now they're showing it as well. Again, they almost beat NC State in week one. They've had a few good weeks as well these past few weeks. And this is a team, man, that, that's going to cause some problems because, you know, they're one of the top teams in the nation, actually, in terms of uh, total defense and total offense. So this is a team that, that definitely has a lot of talent on their on their shoulder, and it feels like Carolina, man. They're they're getting all the good good recruits right now, man. Car- Carolina, <laughs> yeah, the, Carolina's doing pretty good. So <laughs> the, the Carolina teams have been very solid this year, but you definitely take a look at this ECU team, and like I was saying earlier, the two and two doesn't really tell the story. First of all, playing NC State week one, they lost twenty one twenty, but that was a game they were in the entire time. And as Dylan was saying, Holton Aylers is a guy who, like I was saying earlier, not about Bohannon's, who, what he's shown so far, but Holden Aylers shows that he can be a guy who could drive down the field and win the game as he went ahead um, on NC State a couple of times. Didn't obviously work out. They lost that game. But then they came and beat a pretty solid Old Dominion team, a little bit newer to the FBS, but still a decent team. Beat them and then played an FCS team in Campbell, beat them 49-10. to 10. Then last week they lost to Navy, but – if you've been a college football fan for more than a couple of years, you know that 
Air Force, Navy, and Army can all play teams weird, and teams don't know how to play the triple option. So yeah. I wouldn't say that's a fluke game. They lost 23-20, but they still played Navy pretty close. So the way I'm seeing this Eastern Carolina team right now, I think they're a tier above USF. It's not that they have more talent, but the way that they're playing, they're more efficient. Um, they're more cohesive as a team right now. Not saying that USF doesn't have a shot against them, but the way it looks, I would agree with Vegas around where the line was about USF being anywhere from an 8 to 10 point underdog in this game. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, ECU, you know, they're coming into this game as as, as a team that is definitely going to become a, be a formidable task for this squad. And, you know, with USF still kind of, trying to get their feet wet, if you will, this season, even though we're in only week, you know, in week five and, you know, we're kind of getting into the middle of the year. I mean, this is a USF team again, as I mentioned, that needs to find its identity. Uh, we we kind of know what it's like on offense and, you know, the, the rushing attacks, their main, main part, but, you know, this team just, there's not enough like juice out of these guys. I don't know what it, I don't know how to even put it out there, but like that, that we need some energy from USF here and, and they, they got to get it, you know, they got to get it here quick. And especially with conference play, you know, this is really what matters. You can lose all four or three of your non-conference games and it doesn't matter when it gets conference play. So at the end of the day, they got to be fired up heading into Saturday night and maybe they'll play for Tampa. You know, we've seen teams come out of hurricanes and, you know, like, you know, big natural disasters and stuff. And, you know, they always play for the city. You know, it seems like they always have a little bit more uh, energy, if you will. So maybe possibly some of the storm and some of the, the debris, you know, some of the damage that it's done to the Tampa Bay and Fort Myers area. Maybe that brings a little bit of energy for USF. You know, they're playing for the area this weekend. You know, they're they're They have those, those people in mind and they're playing for Tampa Bay and not, not for themselves. Yeah. I, I could see where that's coming. Obviously we, we hope that everyone's as safe as possible during the storm, but yeah, we've sure. seen it from those saints teams as well, where, uh, you get a lot of energy from the community. And that's something that USF has been looking to fill, uh, fulfill throughout Jeff Scott's contract because the attendance numbers, the merch sales, however you want to show it, USF has not been near the top of the FBS in any way, shape yeah. or form. They've been pretty bad in those numbers, if we want to be honest here. So if there could be a way where the community and the team could come together any way possible, that would be great for USF and get some juice and get some energy and get some fans who are really into this team and it could pack a stadium to where we could have some of these home environments, obviously not playing home this week because we're in Boca, but yeah, yeah. as we go into conference play later in the season, as you're saying, Jeff Scott was saying it's zero and zero. So whatever we can do in the conference, we can earn a bowl game. We can earn uh, a, a championship game bid. Like there's a bunch of things that you can do with the season still, but things have to be turned around. Definitely for sure. And, and and again, going back to back to ECU a little bit here as well. Again, you mentioned uh they they lost to NC State, which is a very respectable loss, and they played them very close. Navy, as you mentioned, is 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 a very you know interesting team. As you mentioned, all the academies are very interesting programs. And even though Navy is projected not to have a good season, they played them very close as well. So it's not like it was a blowout loss and Navy won it by like 20 points. I mean, they, they only won it by three. So, uh, you know, this is an ECU team that has, has played very well and they beat a very good old Dominion team. And they're also starting up. Uh, oh, excuse me. No, last week they started up conference play with Navy. I keep forgetting that Navy is in the AAC now. Uh, I know they used to be an independent school. So, but I didn't um, realize that either. So you're clear with me. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, um, but yeah, ECU man, they they got an interesting task here on hand. But again, we'll we'll see how USF comes out here on Saturday. If they they if they could get fourteen nothing early, I mean that that would look really really good. There'll be a lot of fans that would look really excited. I think a lot of fans will be excited. I think people in the program will be excited because you got to remember too, man. You know, there's so much potential with this USF team and there's so much good things happening with this program. You got the new practice facility. You got a stadium that might be built and you want to have a good product on the field. And unfortunately, USF has not been able to do that. So it's almost one of those things where it's like, how do you justify some of these? And obviously, I know a lot of these will end up getting put in regardless. But, you know, you want to have a good product as, you know, the program keeps progressing. And so far, we haven't seen it from them. But again, this is a tough ECU team. But if USF can can get some momentum early on in this game, I think they have a shot against CCU on Saturday. 
Yeah, it's going to be tough. Obviously, any team would like to have start the game with a 14-point lead, but yeah. USF could really use it here. It's been super tough so far. But as you're saying, this is not – we're we're judging this very – this season with, the, with only this season in mind. Yeah. If you really take a look and step back and take a look at the direction of this program, it is upward. But what we've seen with the inconsistent season and some of the lack of – some of the things really good football teams do don't turn the ball over yeah. um, cohesive, good passing game, efficient, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But we just need to start seeing some flashes of good football team throughout this year. As Jeff Scott signed this two year extension, we know that this team's not going to be good right away. Give Jeff Scott some time, let him cook, let him figure some things out. But although we're giving them all this time, we still need to see those flashes and, the fact that this program is continuing to go upwards because two wins in year one, three wins in year two. Is that what it was? One win in year one against Citadel two in year uh, this year. And then one this year so far. So four wins total. So there needs to start being an upward trend is what I'm saying. Yeah. And USF, we Jeff Scott, you have time, but let's start seeing some things, man, you know, and yeah, let's start sure. that this week against a tough ECU team. Well, and remember, too, you know, three of those wins are against FBS schools. Granted, you beat Citadel, FA, or FAMU, and, and Howard, which are, again, pretty respectable FCS wins. Like, I mean, those are pretty... But when you're looking to be a championship FBS team, yeah, it's not... Ex- no, yeah, exactly. At the end of the day, those wins don't mean much of anything. And then they also beat Temple last year, which, again, Temple is a, a very interesting program. You know, they were good a few years ago. Not a very good program. Not not very good anymore. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what USF team we are going to get. Again, we got to figure out what this team is going to be like, and a lot is going to be answered on Saturday night because, again, it's conference play, and if they can't battle at all with ECU, then I don't see how they'll battle a lot with a lot of their schedule that's upcoming in the conference with Cincinnati and UCF and other teams that – are going to be at the same level or if not a little bit better than ECU this season. So uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see, but I want to talk a little bit about some of the key players going into this weekend. So Vaughn, I will start with you and I guess we'll start on the offensive side of the ball for both teams. Who do you see as being the key players for both USF and ECU on the offensive side of the football? Well, we've been talking about Bohan this whole time, so I'll try to focus on somebody else. I really think that, T could be this team's leading back. I really loved what I've seen from him so far. Um, nine carries last week after getting quite a few more in the Florida game. It's tough, but I think they need to start getting him going and start getting a feature back in this game. Obviously, it's nice to be able to switch from back to back to back to back. But I think out of the back so far, Bati has been my favorite. I'm not sure about you, but the way that he can create space with some of his cuts and his feet, I've loved. So I hope that Bati can get going um, at least – uh, in this game through some of the passing games, some of the rushing game. The O-line's been struggling in one of the tougher parts of this year as well, which we haven't really mentioned or focused on enough yeah, so far. Sure. But I would love to see the run game going and get Bati going as well. And then as far as ECU on the offensive side of the ball, we mentioned the quarterback <clears throat> already, uh, Ehlers, and he's going to have a big part in this game as well. But they also have uh Rajay Harris who is a very good um <clears throat> running back and he's also made quite a few starts for this ECU team so I think that if USF's able to hold them down in the passing game he could be big in the running game so USF has to be careful because they have some really talented guys over there at ECU yeah they also got a dual running back group as well with uh Keaton Mitchell and uh, as you mentioned uh, Rajay Harris there as well for ECU. And both guys have scored seven touchdowns to combine on the year, which is pretty impressive for, for the first four weeks of the season. So definitely good. also a rushing team as well for ECU heading into Saturday. So it should be a pretty good rushing matchup here heading into Saturday's game. And uh, as, as you mentioned, Brian Batty, uh, you know, he's been so fun to watch, man, this year. He's been one of the bright spots of this offense and really of this team in general. I mean, the guy's so versatile. That's why he's on the, the special teams. He's made so many great plays this season, and uh, he, he's been so much fun to watch this year. And if you keep giving that kid the ball, he he's a bad man. That's what, that's what somebody said. Excuse me. Uh, he's a bad man on the field whenever you hand him that football. And 
you know, I want to see a little bit more of Jaron Mangum. I, I like Mangum last year. He was one of the leading rushers last year for this Bulls team. He's a, a bit more of a, uh, a a chunk playback, if you will. You know, he kind of squeezes his way through the, the defensive line, if you will. So he's a right. guy I really would like to watch as well a little bit and get to see more of him in this offensive game plan in, in terms of the rushing attack. And then offensively, I'm going to bring up Keaton Mitchell, man. Keaton Mitchell's having a great season. Uh, and similar to Mangum, he, he's kind of kind of pushed his way through defenders throughout the year. And uh, I'm looking forward to see what he can do. Again, this is going to be a really good rushing match between two teams who have really had good rushing attacks this year, except for USF, as we mentioned, the passing attack just hasn't been there. And, uh, and for ECU, it has. So uh, that's going to be the one big difference here heading into Saturday. But I guess we'll now take a look at the defense here, man. Who do you got as your key player on defense for USF? And then who do you have on defense for ECU? Well, as far as USF, after last week's performance against the Russian game, I'm not really going to single out anyone in particular. I'm just going to call out the entire front seven and say, hey, Malik Cunningham, great player, but pretty much what was going on last week, um, pretty unacceptable defensive play, however you really want to put it. Um, USF, you know, has never had the stoutest defense, and that's not their – that's not their profile right now either, but they need to start showing that front seven, especially some of the work that the DBs have done, as you said, a lot of interceptions, a lot of pass deflections over the last couple of years, but the front seven really needs to show um, a little more umph and a little more, Hey, even if we, we give up some things um, down the field. Okay. Okay. But don't break at the end. We don't always have to give up the touchdown yeah. because it feels like this USF team gives up the long touchdown and it gives up the long drive where the team goes all the way down yeah. the field and, and drills it in on them. So I really need that front seven to be able to get a push to be able to get um, uh, make a lot of action there in the backfield that they haven't shown before, but ECU, they have quite a few um, good defensive players. They've played teams very tough this year. Uh, NC state doesn't have the best offense, but uh, they only allowed 21 points against them, and they're a top 10 team. So that's certainly uh, quite the accomplishment. But if if I have to talk about one guy, I guess I'll talk about uh, Tegan Wilk, number nine for ECU. He's one of their leaders in tackles so far. And if he can get a hold of our running backs, it's going to be a tough and long day for us. Yeah, you definitely make a good point there. Yeah, Tegan Wilk has had a very good season for ECU. I've watched a few of his games, and he is a uh, definitely a very good defensive player on that ECU unit. Uh, I'm going to kind of bring up a guy who I've really enjoyed watching this season, and I would love to get to see him kind of have a nice day. And he's really had an impressive year for us. Mikhail LaPointe, man, what a what a player he is. He's he's made some big plays. We I saw him make a huge play on Saturday. He made a big hit on one of the uh, receivers for Louisville last week. I, I forgot who it was that he hit the last week, but Mikhail point man plays with so much passion on the field. He's a gritty player. He makes some big hits, as I mentioned, and he's just a, he's a fun guy to watch. He's already gotten 23 tackles on this USF defense has been one of the bright spots defensively in the secondary two forced fumbles as well, which is pretty impressive. And I got to say, man, I don't know if you saw this last week, but uh, when USF got that fumble last week, did you, I don't know if you noticed they were celebrating afterwards. Like, come on, man. We are not that good to be – and we were losing by, like, 20-something. Like, you yeah. should not be doing that when you're losing by, like, 28 points and you get a fumble. It's not that important at that point in the game. Right. But that's just my little take on it. But, again, Mikhail Point, man, he's had a good season, and uh, he's been a gritty player for us the last couple of seasons, and I'm looking forward to see what he can do here on Saturday. And then for uh, ECU, I – Chose a guy that not a lot of people, I think, talk about. Julius Woods has been very impressive to watch. He's got a pick on the year, 15 tackles on the season. I actually saw the pick that he made. It was a very nice play that Julius Woods ended up making. He's a good playmaker on the defensive side of the football, and I think he could he could make a big splash this weekend against a USF team that, again, has not been very good in the passing game and, uh, you know, again, really needs to get this passing game going. But I think also ECU could take advantage of this week passing game as well with their, I would say, pretty decent secondary and also pretty good defensive line as well. Yeah, I would agree. They definitely have a very solid secondary. ECU as as a unit, very solid uh, defense. Nothing great, nothing outstanding that USF really has to be super scared of, but very solid unit nonetheless. So we're going to have to see Saturday, 
USF's going to have to come out fast or this game could be another race to the finish where one team's scoring a lot and USF scoring a little once again. So hopefully USF can come out fast and that offense can get rolling early. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens here on Saturday with USF ECU. Uh, we're going to talk about the predictions for this game. And then I want to talk briefly real quick before we uh, sign off here. I want to talk a little bit about, about Jeff Scott's future, depending on how the outcome of this game ends up prevailing. Again, Jeff Scott has, you know, the, the record hasn't showed, you know, he's had a great career with USF. And, you know, he, again, has come from a great lineage, coach at Clemson. You know, he's, he's got a great background. You know, he's un, was under that Dabo Sweeney run Clemson Tigers team that went to the national title for a couple straight years. So, you know, the, he, he's got the background where he's been at a major college program in football, but he has not shown that here at USF and it hasn't translated. So we're going to get into that here before we let everybody here go on tonight's show. But uh, what is your predictions for Saturday, man? You know, again, we've talked about it. ECU right now is the better team on paper as we go into this game here on Saturday. And, you know, the stats show it. The plays show it. You know, the T, you know, the actual game play shows it itself. What's your what's your prediction for Saturday's game against US or for USF and ECU in Boca Raton? So trying to be as non-biased as possible, looking at these two teams, if I had to give you a score, I would say somewhere around I would say ECU 31, USF around 21. It's been tough. I think yeah. ECU is going to be able to score on them. USF, I haven't seen what I like from the offense so far, but or USF, I haven't seen what I've – or I haven't liked what I've seen so far. But if USF can get going early, this could be anyone's game. ECU's no team um, to laugh about, but they're no team to write home about either. So yeah. USF does have a shot here, but they have to come out fast. However, in a prediction, I think it's going to be tough for USF to pull this one out. How about you, Dylan? I, I have the same thing, man. And actually, funny enough, I also I gave ECU 31 points uh, to score here. So uh, I, I think it's going to be 31-17 ECU. I think ECU pulls away late in this game. I think USF does stick around. I think USF does show some signs from that Florida game, from that Howard game where you know, later in the game, we saw some signs of improvement from this team. And again, this team needs to keep showing progression because it feels like, you know, weeks two and week three's progression for this team feels like it all got stalled away when they lost last week to Louisville. And they need to come out and, you know, kind of continue where they left off in week three. They need to put that last week's game behind them, look into this week. And, you know, with some unfortunate circumstances that they're not going to be in Tampa. And it's unfortunate, man, because the Bulls, will not be playing another game in Tampa until October 15th. It will be a month since the Bulls have played in Tampa uh, here when they play their next game against Tulane. So uh, it's going to be interesting, but I'm going to go 31-17 uh, ECU beating the Bulls. But I do think we see some improvement. I do think we finally get our first passing touchdown. High hopes for that, Vaughn, I, that USF is going to get Let's cross our, our passing fingers. touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see we'll see what happens but i would love to see that there from bohannon get his first passing touchdown of his usf career and also get our first passing touchdown as a team on the season so hopefully all that is able to get accomplished here on saturday but i gotta talk about jeff scott's future man you know this is kind of a big thing that a lot of people have been talking about here in the tampa bay area in terms of usf football you know jeff scott again as we mentioned has not had the nicest of resumes here in his time here, his tenure here at USF. Excuse me, my allergies are killing me. So, <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, he has not had the the record and the track record, if you will, that shows that he has been a, a successful quarter or success, successful head coach. Jeez, I am losing it now. <laughs> um, but regardless, if USF does lose this game here on Saturday, and say they lose a couple more here heading in later into the season. Maybe they beat a team like Tulane or not Tulane Temple and uh, Navy, you know, two teams that are going to be on the, the bottom part of the American. Uh, let's say if they beat a Temple, a Navy or both at the end of the season, we look here and say, you know, we only got about two or three wins on the year. What does Jeff Scott's future hold at the end of this year? So I think, with the extension, I would assume that he has at least two more years clean, scot-free. So the rest of this year, I would say all development. And then next year, we really start to see, hey, your seat's on fire a little bit here if we're not starting to win the game, win some yeah. games. 
But as far as this year, I think no matter what happens, even if USF loses the rest of their games this year, the university show that they have confidence in him with that two-year extension. So, so far we'll see, but I'm going to give Jeff Scott at least the rest of this year and the beginning of next year before I pass too much judgment. There's just too much turnover. Give him a couple of recruiting classes, let the facilities build a little bit, let him get some more time to be able to recruit some of the in-state talent that we have and then pass a judgment in a year, year and a half from now. I, I agree with that completely. I think you put it best there because I, you know, so many people have been saying like fire Jeff Scott, get rid of Jeff Scott. It doesn't work like that in college football, man. It's a complete, it's, this isn't the NFL. It's college football. You're building a program here. You're not, you know, you're not building a team that's going to try to win the Super Bowl in one season, you know? So this is a, a USF team that's growing. There's a lot of good things going in their way. As you mentioned, a lot of facilities are getting built right now for the program. Jeff Scott's, you know, looks like he's going to try to be the guy that's going to lead them into this, you know, exciting future that the USF Bulls have here in this football program. You know, there's a lot of exciting things happening with this USF program here in the future. And I think Jeff Scott it has the capability of coaching a very good football team. But again, as you mentioned, this team's young. They're still learning. Uh, two new offensive coordinator or two new coordinators in uh, Bob Shoup and Travis Trickett this uh, this season. So there's a lot of new things happening this year with this team. And you also got a brand new quarterback in Jerry Bohannon who's only played four games. And I know he hasn't you know played as we've hoped, but he's still brand new to this entire program and brand new to this school. And you know for him. You know, we could see improvement as we get later on into the year and maybe even here this weekend as we start here with conference play. So I, I agree. I think Jeff Scott will ride out maybe his con his entire contract. Uh, I think there are some concerns this season, but I think next season for sure, as you mentioned, I think he'll be definitely on the hot seat and it'll be time to see if Jeff Scott and his team can perform because I think next season will be very important to see if he's the guy, right guy for the job. I agree. Yeah. Next year, it's going to be put up for shut up time. But for now, let's see flashes. Let's see improvement. Let's see a little more consistency. Yeah. And maybe next year, Jeff Scott will be able to beat Alabama next year. If, if we could beat Alabama next year <laughs> in like opening night or week two of the season, I, I think uh, then that will prove something to everybody. And remember, it's in here in Tampa. So it'll actually be a very interesting game heading into next season. And it should be one of the biggest games in USF history, Yeah, I should say as well. Absolutely. But I would say, uh, let's see if we can beat ECU this week first. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that as well. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, we got to appreciate and we want to appreciate Vaughn Sakura here for coming on the show. Vaughn, thank you so much, man, for coming on. Thank you for bringing up your expertise. Obviously, you go to USF now, so you know a lot about this program. You know a lot about this school. And uh, being a Florida quarterback, you know a lot of the things schematically speaking. So you really brought a lot of insight for this game here heading into Saturday and from last week's game against Louisville. Let's hope for a win, man. That's all we're hoping for here as Bulls fans. And uh, I actually might end up going to the game. I, my buddy who's a photographer here in the area who does our USF games, uh, I have been talking to him. If he doesn't get flooded tonight, and hopefully he stays safe to my friend Alex there, stay safe, my friend. And everybody in the state of Florida stay safe with this hurricane. I know we saw some pretty bad damage already happen down in the Fort Myers area, but uh, you know, maybe I'll be in FA I'll be at FAU Stadium on Saturday watching the Bulls, maybe getting a win against ECU. So we'll see. That would be awesome, man. I hope you're able to go. I was uh, super stoked to be able to join you today and uh yeah, man. hopefully the Bulls can pull one out on Saturday. Yes, sir. Go Bulls, man. And uh yeah, we'll uh maybe we'll we'll get you back on next week, maybe. Well, for the uh, believe sounds they, good to me, man. We'll catch you soon. Believe they play Cincinnati. So, anyways, guys, that's been basically it for us here on the USF preview show to preview ECU and USF, and we will recap it here on Saturday. Go Bulls and have a good night, ladies and gentlemen.